would start off by saying this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. This blood, if it's not collected right then, it becomes medical waste. It's going in the trash can. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to capture these cells that are young stem cells. And they have a lot of benefits in the fact that they're easily accessible. Everyone's born with an umbilical cord, <laughs> right? And the process of you know, draining the blood out of the umbilical cord into a bag is painless and simple and much simpler than having to do a bone marrow harvest. There are other stem cells out there that are accessible, but just really the pristine nature of the cells at that time of birth, you know, that opportunity is very unique. One of the benefits of banking has to do with matching. So if you're going to use the cells clinically as a therapeutic, specifically for transplant, having matched cells is very important. And the best place you're going to find a match is within your family because you share, you know, those genes. And so having a source that is in the bank and, you know, has a high chance of being a match for other people in the family, that if there was a, a, a medical need for it, that you can call upon it right away. It's already been processed. You already have all the background testing done. You know, it's everything's there. So I think accessibility on the front end for collection is one part of it. And also accessibility at time of medical need, that it's kind of all prepped and ready so if it's my umbilical cord, well, it's going to match me, right? Because it came from me. So that's the, that's an absolute. When you talk about then looking at brothers and sisters, the way that it works out roughly is 25% of the time will be an exact match. About 50% of the time, it's a partial match. And 25% of the time, it's not going to match at all. So that's just kind of a crude way of thinking about it. That's basically the way it works. Now, having it be your own or being a siblings and being able to use it depends on what you're using it for, all right? So if I have a genetic blood disorder, I'm not going to want to use my own stem cells, right? Because my stem cells are my genes and they've got the disorder, right? So in certain situations, you want to use a sibling's cord blood for transplant. In other clinical settings, having your own might be necessary, right? So for certain clinical trials, it might be mandatory that you need to have autologous cord blood. It's a fancy word for a need to have your own, you know, cord blood. And there's certain situations where using your own is appropriate. And there's other clinical situations where using a brother or sister might be the most appropriate. So the matching is one part of it. And then understanding the clinical scenario to understand which way to use your own or as a match to one of the best donor source. So when you have banked and vocal cord blood, the ability to use it one time or multiple times absolutely depends on what you're using it for. So if you are using the cord blood for a transplant, they will use the entire thing every single time. So to go back to an analogy about seeds, if you have devastated someone's blood and immune system, and then you're putting in new cells to grow out a healthy functioning system, you want to give them as many seeds as possible, right? You want to give all of them. Now, when we bank cord blood, we do bank in a format that is a five compartment bag. We're trying to provide flexibility for the future. Now, if it was needed for transplant tomorrow, you could use the whole thing. We are just trying to think forward because as there's new trials and new medications, we don't know what the requirement's going to be. And having the flexibility of a multi-compartment storage bag allows that. But it's definitely one time usage for a transplant. So if you needed a stem cell transplant and you used a donor through the public registry and for some reason it didn't graft or you had another problem down the line, again, the public system is there for everybody. The public system is really a public registry of stem cells. So like I am registered as a potential bone marrow donor. So if someone anywhere in the world, they have a registry and if I happen to be a match, they could call me and say, are you willing to be a bone marrow donor right now? And then the cord blood inventory is part of that searchable system as well. So as if I'm a doctor and I have someone who's a transplant, I'm going to consider all the stem cell options. Do they have a family member who's a match? Do they have cord blood banked as a family? You're taking all the different things into consideration and trying to decide what's the best for that patient, right? The best match, the best size, all these different things go into making a decision. But there's not a limit. If you used a public source of cord blood unit and you needed another source, then that's why it's there. 